Uh, council, welcome to the council workshop for Monday, January 18th. This meeting is being held virtually entirely. Uh, council, there has been a resolution that was circulated for holding public meetings without the public in attendance in accordance with uh, Public Health Order M192. Uh, the wording of that is in the council package, uh, in the agenda package. Uh, would a member of council please move that uh, motion? So moved. Moved by Councillor Hansen, second by Councillor Kern. Call the question on the motion. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion carries. Uh, we have a uh, an agenda that has been circulated. Actually, sorry. Uh, yes, we have an agenda that's been circulated. Are there any errors or omissions from the agenda as presented? Hearing none, will someone move adoption of the agenda? Moved by Councillor Back, second by Councillor Hansen. Call the question. All those in favor, contrary minded, motion carries. We have a set of meeting minutes that have been circulated. This is from the uh, December 14th council workshop. Are there any errors or omissions from that, uh, from those meeting minutes? Hearing none, will someone move adoption of the meeting minutes from the December 14th council workshop? Moved by Councillor Back, second by Councillor Curran. Call the question on the matter. All those in favor, contrary minded, motion carries. Now, just before we get uh, underway with the business of the evening, I uh, just want to make sure that we get into the record uh, which members of council are present for tonight's workshop. Uh, so I believe, uh, Councillor Back, you're here. You can say hi. Oh, did I catch present. you? I caught I'm you. Having a great by present. Food. Good evening again. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Councillor Curran? Here. Councillor Hansen? Present. Councillor Bond? I'm here. Councillor Mary, Present. And we're doing what we can to reconnect with uh, Councillor Forbes. Uh, I believe she's just joining us now. Okay. Great. Okay. So on to uh, item 3.1, reports from Councillor staff. This is the uh, discussion. The workshop topic tonight is the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities. This is a uh, an initiative that has been brought forward by Councillor Curran and it was reviewed by the council at the end of last year uh, and uh, was uh, uh, in endorsed by the council and forwarded to this workshop for further information. Uh, and so at this point, I'm going to go to uh, uh, Mr. Stewart just for a quick comment and then follow on to Councillor Curran uh, to, I believe you have a little bit of a pres addition to the presentation. Mr. Stewart. Yeah, your worship. Um Two things. One is there were two components to the report from Councilor Curran. One is to deal with uh, racism and inclusion. The other was to deal with reconciliation. They're related. I'm just suggesting that we focus our comments on the coalition and inclusion, and we'll deal with a reconciliation at another point because that's going to take some dialogue with, with First Nations to define what that actually looks like. Um, the second thing is that the, the recommendation the Council approved was to join the coalition which does require some stakeholder comp uh, consultation um, and some commitment to the 10, I'll, I'll call them commitments that are, that are associated with the, with the coalition. So the purpose of tonight, before I turn over to Councillor Curran, is really to continue the discussion that we had earlier on to better understand the intent, what, what council understands uh, that resolution to mean and, and, and the extent to which uh, they want to pursue that the scope of the activity, because that's very important. Is this a matter of just a matter of internal review of policies, or is, is it something that's more outward uh, focusing? And so we're just trying to understand that better and make sure the council is all understanding that uh, before we come back with some recommendations as to how we could proceed. So that's my introductory comments. Thank you very much, Mr. Stewart. Councillor Curran, uh, well, I guess I should probably mention we do have uh, a guest on the uh, on the Zoom tonight. We have uh, Wendy McCullough from uh, North Shore Multicultural Society. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Hi, uh, thank you, Mayor Little. Yeah, and uh, now I'll turn it over to Councillor Curran for your comments. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. So um, yeah, just going back to December 8th uh, to recap the two council motions that were unanimously supported and thank you council for um, 
the support of this, um, that we joined the coalition. Um, in doing so, we endorsed the common commitments and we agreed to develop or adapt our plan of action um, and that we support implementation of the municipal specific uh, Reconciliation Commission of Canada calls to action. So just to recap, the common commitments um, cover areas of municipal responsibility, housing, service delivery, employment, um, et cetera. And um, they're structured around three areas of municipal responsibility. So the municipality as an organization that upholds human rights. So providing equal opportunities for the municipal employer. Um, and I'm just gonna move. I know that one of the no's is to read slides. So I'll try not to read the slides um, all the way. Um, but the, um, so these are the three um, objectives under uh, the organization that upholds human rights. Um, the second, yes. a guardian that respects the public interest. So this is increasing vigilance against systemic and individual discrimination, monitoring discrimination in the municipality. Um, taking action to address it, supporting individuals who experience discrimination and providing police services that are exemplary institutions for fighting um, discrimination. Uh, the municipality as a community that promotes diversity um, involving residents and giving them a voice in anti-racism initiatives um, and decision-making, challenging discrimination and promoting diversity and equal opportunities in education and other forms of learning and promoting the respect, knowledge and appreciation of cultural diversity and the inclusion of indigenous and racialized communities in the cultural fabric of the municipality. So the plan of action um, is a key tool um, that we would use um, once we have um, created it, it's uh, adopted, it really becomes integrated into all of our visions, um, strategies and policies. So um, we are at this stage right now, just to put it in context where we're just creating the structure um, so we are not talking um, this evening, the goal wasn't to discuss the actual plan. Um, it's just to um, talk about some next steps, um, which was the direction coming out of the council support in December. So this is really about um, laying a foundation. And so I just wanted to go through uh, what I see as the 2021 objectives and ultimately hopefully getting council support um, to direct staff to begin this work. Um, so the first step would be engaging an expert to conduct um, baseline assessment of current attitudes, knowledge, experiences, and policies related to anti-oppression and inclusion within the District of North Vancouver organization. Um, other uh, places have done this work and um, this is an important first step. The um, next recommendation is that council and senior staff participate in anti-racism and reconciliation workshops, which are led by black indigenous and people of color educators. Um, and we commit to sustained and transparent action. One of the concerns that's been brought to my attention is corporations and governments going through um, some steps, but not really uh, making it part of sustained action. Um, and so we really want to make this something that is clear to the community, the, um, the steps that we're taking and showing them um, how we're actually creating a plan to um, move forward and to hold ourselves um, accountable. Building awareness and support for the coalition across the organization. So there'll be lots of folks within um, our municipality and certainly within our organization of the District of North Vancouver. Um, that are not sure what this means, what this looks like, and so really building a support and awareness for it among staff. Um, another recommendation is to retain consultants to commence the implementation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada calls to action. That path has been um, laid out uh, in the 2015 um, Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. So that is really a matter of um, council has supported implementation of the municipal specific truth and reconciliation calls to action. So this is really just a step towards um, taking the next step, um, which is actually implementing uh, those steps. And one of the coalition requirements is to assign a council and staff champion um, for the coalition and to ensure that they have adequate support. And um, the final step, um, outreach to and support for community members and community partners to design the process for creating the plan of action. So I think what's really important here um, and is to make sure that the 
leading up to the plan of action that that process itself is quite inclusive. So it's not, um, it's not folks creating um, policy, it's the community actually um, led uh, creating that policy. And um, so I just wanted to kind of frame it um, in terms of what I see as the next steps. And I'm really um, grateful that Wendy, do you mind if I call you Wendy? I call everyone, please call me Megan. I always say, thank you. Um, Wendy, who is the executive director of the North Shore Multicultural Society. Um, we have been working behind the scenes because part of this leading up to getting to this point was to, to speak with um, community partners. And so I'm really pleased that Wendy has agreed to speak to us about some of the work that's already happening with our partner agencies um, across the municipality and why this work is important um, and urgent for us to begin. So I will pass it over to you and mute myself and unshare my screen, I think. Councillor Kern. Um, I, I'll go ahead then, may a little? Yes, okay. I just um, I, are, are you going to be sharing your screen or? Uh, no, I'm no. just going to be speaking to you. Um, I just wanted to um, say thank you very much for um, uh, having me be a part of your important workshop today. Um, but more than that, I really want to say uh, thank you to you for being so brave to um, adopt these motions to be part of the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities. You know, it's, I think it's a puzzle for municipalities that often have too much work and too little resources to, to know how to go about taking on uh, the massive work of addressing racism and reconciliation in our communities. And, and we as a nonprofit agency, you know, certainly feel the weight of the work to come. Um, and yet we feel it's so very important, especially in this time um, that, that we do this work together. Um, some, something that I feel is, Sometimes we don't have to know all the answers when we start or be overly confident. We just have to step into the work with a great deal of humility and a great deal of consultation and the path will show itself to us. So, so just from my heart, deep gratitude uh, for your bravery in doing this. It's truly historical um, and, and I deeply appreciate this. That, that you're doing this. Um, I think we've just a few broader comments. I think that we've seen um, during this time, this incredible time this last year, just so much going on with the pressures of COVID to address that, certainly what's going on down south, which often um, has us not uh, remembering what's going on in our own communities. Um, and uh, I think everybody was quite um, astounded uh, when we saw the report that came out at the end of October from our municipality to the south of us from Vancouver that uh, showed that Asian, Asian hate crimes had increased by 878% according to um, the Vancouver police reports. Um, and also um, we've seen in Metro Vancouver over the last few years, an incredible rise in hate crimes um, and in hate. And unfortunately, Metro Vancouver stands as the, 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 the region that has the highest level of hate crimes in the country, um, 7.1 times uh, per 100,000 people. I, I feel that on the North Shore, we don't know exactly what the st statistics are. Uh, we don't know how many people have reported um, hate, um, hate crimes and anti-Asian racism during COVID. Um, but the research is showing us from Canada that it's about 25% of all Asian people who've experienced that. Um, so when we, when we look um, at, at our municipality, and, and we recognize that in our municipality, um, we have slightly less visible minority, visible minority people that term as Stats Canada. You know, we've got 25% according to um, Stats Can uh, for the District of North Vancouver, people who identify as visible minorities. But that's, but when you think it, it, and you apply the, those, who's, who, how many people have experienced racism, um, active racism and hate, it's a lot of people. You know, um, and we're looking in, then the numbers would be about 5,500 people um, who've experienced that. So, so I think it's very important that we don't underestimate that, that racism is happening in our communities 
We might not have the numbers to, to understand it deeply, but we know that it's there. Certainly at our agency, we have many people reporting to us that they've experienced uh, um, words of hate, um, not being allowed to pass on the sidewalk, I'm not being able to being intimidated in grocery store lineups and so on. And anti-Asian racism is only one axis of racism. We all deeply know as Canadians the pain of um, racism um, against um, Indigenous and Aboriginal people. And I'm so glad to see that that is part of your, of your um, commitment moving forward. We as an agency are um, almost 30 years old. Um, we started um, back in the 90s um, in response to racist incidents on the North Shore, actually. But we also soon became um, the agency that helped immigrants and migrants settle into the community. So roughly speaking, we touch the lives of about 8,000 people um, across the North Shore every year. We've got a staff of about 80 people. Um, just to give you a little bit of an idea who we are. An important area that we work in is, is around inclusion, um, anti-racism and, and equity. And um, in the last year, we have um, decided through a coalition of our community partners to really focus on racial equity and to, and to help the North Shore to develop a racial equity strategy where it can address systemic racism across the different sectors like health, um, education, access to um, community resources like libraries, et cetera. Um, I, don't, I know that some of you did attend the, the forum that we had online um, where we were looking at what is racial equity and how do we better understand that. And it is still on our website if you want to go and have a look. Um, in a few months, we're going to hold the second part um, of, that, uh, of that forum, and we're going to have a mini conference on racial equity. Um, we've hired a researcher who's almost completed with her work, who's looking at how other municipalities and areas have handled and gone about having racial equity strategies. And we will make sure that you're invited to that, because honestly, to do this work, we all got to put our heads together in a very humble way. And, and look at, at how we can learn more to, to get it right. Part of that, you know, we've, we've seen in, in, the, in the news so much, like the call for, um, for disaggregated race-based data, um, and, and that needs to be a part of, of what we need to do moving forward in order to see how we're making a difference. And, and, and that the policies and the practices that we're, putting, that we're putting in place are actually making a difference. But if we don't develop those together and ones that are right for our communities, we might miss the mark. So we really do believe that a racial equity strategy has to be the right one for the North Shore that takes our realities into account. Um, one of the, the tables, planning tables that our agency runs is the North Shore Immigrant Im um, Inclusion Partnership. And it's a coalition of about 35 service providers across the North Shore. There are many people from, from your municipality who take part in that. In a recent survey that we did with them in 2019, um, we uh, found that, I'm just looking for my notes here, 93% of service providers on the North Shore um, believe that we've got to identify and address um, systemic and individual racism in our community. And 100% agree that we've got to look at uh, reconciliation and indigeneity. So it seems to me that the direction that you're moving is very much in line with where, um, with where, what the thinking is on the North Shore and indeed the world um, about stepping forward to address things. Our agency is also very proud um, of the fact that we have very close relationships with Indigenous communities as we're learning. We, we as an agency have just developed over the last year our reconciliation and in, indigeneity strategy um, with a lot of help and support from agencies like Reconciliation Canada. Um, and I'm just saying that because, you know, as you bear in mind how you move forward, you know, we can help you and, and let you know how we did it and connect you to people. But I'm sure you have lots of your own connections. Um, we also really believe in education. Um, you know, we don't miraculously have the answers to everything. We're in the process of constant learning ourselves. Um, 
the folks who lead um, our anti-racism training and our agents are all BIPOC people, Black, Indigenous, people of color who have very unique um, experiences based on their live exper lived experience. And we try to facilitate our own learning and to help others in the community do that learning too. Of note, for example, we've just completed training with the district of, of um, North Vancouver Library with their staff and there's one coming up in a few days for their board um, to do that training. Um, and, and so um, there's a lot of work to be done for ourselves and for all of us as we move forward. Um, and I think maybe um, Megan, that's enough from me, but I just wanted to really come today to say, you know, to, to give you my honor and, and to say, thank you so much for stepping into this uncomfortable space it's not always very easy to know what the next steps are, um, but you will have lots of allies in us and others um, as you move through the work. Thank you very much. Councillor Kern. Um, thank you for that. And I, I don't know if um, Charlene, uh, are we gonna get a staff comment before we get into it? I, I guess the point of this really is that this is um, going to be lifelong work um, and we really today's the day you know to start <laughs> anytime and we're all in different places in our learning um, and I think it's just really important um, that we do really fully commit um, to this deeply and send the signal to our staff and to our community that we take this very seriously um, this is about human rights and um, I feel very passionately about doing this work um, and so I, I think it's important that staff get that direction from us. Um, and there is a lot of work happening in our community. Um, as Wendy pointed out, um, you know, having folks that have um, Black, Indigenous, people of color lead us um, who have become educators in this space. Um, so this isn't really a discussion about um, systemic racism. It's about our addressing it is, is the way I wanted to sort of um, move us along um, and, but I'm happy, I'm happy to hear from um, everyone. And I don't know if staff um, has a comment. Uh... Mr. Stewart? Yeah, your, your worship, we're, we're trying to understand what, uh, we understand what Councillor uh, Curran's intent is. Uh, ultimately, and I think it's been mentioned, uh, we're gonna have to have really strong support because there's, uh, depending on uh, the extent of, of the work that we wanna do, we, we need to have uh, support both within the community and, and within council. And we're just trying to understand uh, before we start to make plans to implement this, what council thinks it means and how far they're willing to go. And I'm not in any way, sensor form or diminishing the comments that have been made. I, I, they're important, they're significant. We understand them, but we need to, we need to understand uh, the extent to which the, the scope of this project is so that we can start to, to lay out a plan of action um, and, and come back to council on how, we would, uh, how would it, we would implement. There's no question COVID makes a little bit of awkwardness, but that doesn't mean we can't make progress. But we need, we need to hear what council really understands and feels about this. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comment, Councillor Kern, before I go to council? Oh, I, I agree. I'm really looking forward to hearing from Council. Thank you. Councillor Bond, followed by Councillor Hanson. Go ahead. Thanks, Mayor Little. I guess uh, my first comment, and maybe it's a question uh, for staff, um, you know, I think we've heard around the table here that we do need leadership and commitment. And I, I think, uh, you know, in response to Mr. Stewart's comment about the scope of our commitment to this, well, it should match the scope of the problem. And, uh, you know, uh, many of us did attend that session. Uh, many of us have lived in this community for a long time. And, and you know, from the perspective that we do, we can, uh, we do have an understanding of, of the scope of the problem. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, um, Council Curran said that we're all at different places in our learning or our unlearning around, uh, around the issue of uh, racism and how we can become uh, uh, anti-racist. But, uh, you know, I've, I've never been uh, on my six years of council, been in a workshop before where um, a councillor made a motion and then got put in charge of the workshop. And I think Councillor Kern did a great job at uh, coming up with this, but 
you know, I'd really like to hear, Mr. Stewart, what's what's your level of commitment and, uh, you know, the level of commitment for, from senior staff, because, you know, uh, you know, I would expect that if, if uh, council gave direction like we did in December to implement a, a plan, you know, the, the plan, the coalition of, uh, of um, inclusive municipalities has a website. Um, there is a long, you know, 50 plus page document about the different steps. Uh, you know, I would have expected that staff would have gone uh, onto the website, would have looked at those different steps, would have looked at um, where we can start. Um, so I'd maybe like to hear some more comments specifically around uh, uh, your personal commitment and the commitment of staff towards this project. Would it be appropriate to just do a round of council and then, because Mr. Stewart has just spoken and just asked feedback from council. Um, Mr. Stewart, do you have a quick comment? Oh, just, uh, you know, staff uh, serve at the direction of council. Council represents the community. This is a community issue. This isn't a particular staff issue. If, if council directs me, for example, as a very minimal level, is to review our internal policies, uh, that's, that's easy enough to do. But if we start to talk about uh, societal change and community change, that's a bigger issue. And I'm just trying to get a sense um, on uh, what the degree of support is from council to move in that direction. <clears throat> in the discussion that we had uh, when uh, Councillor uh, Curran's motion was put forward and council supported it, there was a commitment that I made uh, as staff to bring this back to council to have a more fulsome political discussion, because this is a political discussion. I'm, I'm sorry, we can do anything as staff, but it's a political discussion. So I, I'm just looking forward to the comments from the rest of council. As Bond, did you have a follow-up or? You know, I think of if, if there's any specific direction is that we would look at uh, what the other municipalities have done, the documents that are already prepared, the work that other inclusive municipalities, the municipalities that have adopted this have done. And, uh, and you know, staff would start coming back with a work plan for a, a lot of this. It's probably, it's well laid out in those workbooks and those and those guides of where the different steps are and where a, a community should start. So I would support um, staff uh, spending the time and the effort into into starting that work. Thank you, Councillor Hanson. Yeah, thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, I, I generally support the uh, direction uh, that Councillor Kern put forward as uh, immediate action steps. I read uh, through again the uh, work for, for coalition uh, uh, of uh, inclusive com uh, communities or municipalities. I mean, I was struck by um, a, an issue that uh, we certainly, I think, can take leadership on, and that is uh, the representation of uh, visible minorities or racialized groups on council. Um, uh, visible minorities, according to uh, the statistics put forward by Wendy McCullough, represent approximately a quarter of our community. And yet, uh, I've lived in the community uh, on and off since 1961, since I was born, and uh, been attentive to politics. And I cannot recall a non-Caucasian uh, sitting on council. I mean, we've done a pretty good job now of securing uh, gender balance. Uh, and there's uh, has been a, a female serve as mayor, but I'm not aware of anyone that wasn't of European heritage uh, sitting on council. And uh, I mean, from my point of view, uh, that's perhaps uh, someplace that we could start. Uh, we could uh, try to create some kind of a framework uh, that provides encouragement or um, um, uh, incentive or uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to put forward the specific ideas right now, uh, but I wonder if that isn't a responsibility that does uh, sit with this uh, council to try and ensure that there's some kind of a mechanism by which uh, we do a better job of establishing um, uh, diversity amongst our, amongst our council. Uh, and I say that in the context of the fact that there is an election coming up in 2022 and uh, wouldn't it be nice if after that local government election, uh, the council of the district uh, was more representative of our, our community, uh, not only in terms of gender balance, but also in terms of uh, the, the other uh, 
uh, uh, black, indigenous, uh, people of color, or other um, equity mandates, uh, so that our, our council is more representative. So that's a specific uh, target that I think we could make it our responsibility as this council uh, to create some kind of a mechanism whereby um, where there's a, 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 whereby our, our council becomes more representative. Thank you, Councillor Hansen. Councillor Back. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to get into the actions tonight, but there's um, some excellent tools, obviously, within this um, within this workbook. Uh, there's some great questions that we can be asking ourselves uh, of our organization and of the community. Um, so I don't know how far we want to get into that, but I can just say that I still fully support um, us diving into this and uh, putting the resources, uh, staff resources and other um, resources behind this that we need to, to really start something and do it well and um, uh, do it right. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm fully supportive. And uh, I think we, as Councillor Bond has said, we um, need to look at other municipalities and see how they're going about it. Um, I know, Councillor Curran, you've, you've had conversations with other um, councillors across the North Shore. So as much as we can make this a North Shore initiative where possible, I think we should try and do that. Um, and certainly North Shore Multicultural Society, you're a, you're a wonderful resource uh, as we sort of put our plans together. So um, I guess at this point, if you're just gauging sort of where everybody's at, I'm still very much supportive of this. I'm very aware of my position as a white male um, on this council to Councillor Bond, uh, Councillor Hansen's uh, comments, which I think are really uh, worth worth looking at uh, as we look to the next election and future elections. You know, let's make sure that we are doing everything we can to promote um, diversity when it comes to to people that are considering running for this uh, position. So, lots to consider, and I I'm really interested in the actions, and and I've, I've got a lot of ideas, but I think at this point, interest and um, support is is very much there. Thank you, Councillor Back. Councillor Mary. Uh, thank you. Um, Ms. McCullough, you um, commented about a program that you just um, worked with our library. Could you maybe elaborate on, on that program and tell us a little bit about it and how it worked? Um, I, I can for sure. Um, thank you for asking. So the the library, the, the uh, District of North Vancouver Library, has been a long-standing member on our immigrant and inclusion planning table, um, and have uh, senior staff and community outreach workers um, have been part of many conversations around addressing um, immigrant inclusion, racism, um, looking at um, indigeneity and reconciliation. And uh, we were invited by them um, to come and do um, a more um, awareness and education for their staff, because sometimes I guess they it's one person representing the, you know, the agency on our table mm -hmm. um, in order for people to learn more. You know, what do we, it's so confusing. You know, what do we mean by racism? There's so many different types of racism. How do we understand power and privilege? You know, we know that newcomers, immigrants and racialized immigrants love the library. They love the libraries. It's the first place they go, you know, because they know that they're going to get a wonderful uh, resource there. And they also get a lot of friendliness and warmth. You know, but but at the same time, you know, how do we actually go in and 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 be real around around addressing any unintentional systemic racism that might be there? So so um, Jacqueline Van Dijk, who's the head librarian, you know, she was she was the one who asked us, you know, do we want to come in and do some pro D, not only with them but also with their with their um, board, um, and and in the spirit our the way we do training, it's very much like, let's open this up, let's open up a space and let's all learn together and see where that can take us. So in the background, we know with the racial equity research that we're doing, you know, one of the things that we're curious about is like, how do we keep this aggregated race-based data? You know, do we know if people who racialized or indigenous are using the libraries? or using other services. Mm. We, we have a sense from, from doing research from our clients, you know, who's using, it's usually 45% are using the library, which is really high, mm. but we don't really know what that means in relation to library services as well. 
So, so I think that, you know, they've done such a great job in your library. I love your library, you know, to really be inclusive of all people, mm-hmm. you know, and, and to find those ways. We've been doing programs with the District of North Van Library for almost 20 years on getting immigrant parents in there um, to do story times. And we've done co-delivery for a long time. Mm-hmm. So this, this came, didn't come sort of pop out of nothing. It pops out of a long relationship. And kudos to them for that vision. And, and um, you know, we'll continue to partner with them in any way we can to support to support their, um, what their mandates are and what we're doing. We've just, I just want to add two quick things. We've just received a little bit of money from um, the West Vancouver Foundation and we're working with Family Services to develop a North Shore specific training program for frontline workers who we believe are hearing um, people's experiences of racism on the streets. People aren't necessarily going to the police because they're not quite comfortable, but it's librarians and it's settlement workers and recreation workers who are hearing those stories. So we need to support them as, as well to be able to know what to do with those stories. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a growth that we all need to come together you know, to really achieve things. You, you, um, you have a really nice way of making it feel um, that you, you talk about our bravery to start talking and, yes. you know, to, to expand and to make, um, you know, our community better and to make our organizations better, um, to make people feel more welcomed. Um, you have a very um, nice way of, of uh, drawing people in. Um, because it is a scary conversation. People don't want to say the wrong thing. They don't want to ask the wrong question for fear of being shamed. And certainly social media um, can, you know, do that um, in a second, um, you know, when uh, you ask questions. You know, for years as a counselor, um, you know, having a, a room full in our chambers of people sitting there listening to um, you know, our, our expert engineers and our planners and, and politicians that have been around for years, you know, I've often gazed out into that, um, that chamber and looked at uh, um, the people that are wanting to take part in the process. And so many of them would sit and listen, but they wouldn't dare ask a question for fear of asking a question that they thought might be stupid. And uh, there are no stupid questions. No, no. That's why I have my role. It's to model stupidity and to mm-hmm. model mistakes. Mm-hmm. And my team gently correct me and bring me along. But yeah. I think, you know, as, as white folks, and we all are white sitting here, from what I can tell, you know, we have a responsibility to open space for these Absolutely. conversations to happen. And that is my role, is to open space. And, and we've got to do that firmly and decisively like what you've done, but we've also got to do it kindly in a way that we are all learning and growing because we also want to model that for our children and our children's children. And, and we're gonna hold our own feet to the fire. You know, we, 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 we will do that too. Mm-hmm. Um, but but the, the space is opening in a way whether we like it or not and and it's really good for us to be there to guide it I wanted to just quickly say to Councillor Hanson that you know we also thinking about that with representation on councils and we're actually having a little workshop in a few weeks where we're getting um, some of the people of color on, on other councils um, to talk about their pathway of how they got there Mm-hmm. to try and inspire people, mm-hmm. you know, but, but some of your, your committees that you've got, like your grants committee um, for your community grants, they always come and see yep. me every year. You know, they're doing such a grand job of having uh, more, um, just not only white folks, but having people of color and immigrants on there, you know, so that change is already happening. Absolutely. And then we just have to lift it up and give it some resources and yeah. some power, and, and we will get there. I really believe it together. We will get there together. So I would like to, uh, Mr. Stewart, if you want where I'd like to go with this, I'd like to start with the North Shore Multicultural Society. I'd like to work, um, I'd like to start working with you. We, we've we seen you come to our council over the years, um, certainly in the time that I've been here. And um, quite honestly, it's usually um, for, um, 
a, a thank you for funding, um, maybe a presentation, but it's certainly not on a yearly basis. Um, but I'm interested um, in certainly on my hat, um, my, my representation on different committees. I'm thinking the North Van Rec, Com Rec Commission. Uh, I sit on North Shore Emergency Management and certainly, you know, the work that um, North Shore Emergency Management does um, in times of need. Um, there's certainly, uh, you know, things that they need to learn. Um, and I'd like to, I'd like staff to come back with um, an opportunity for us to take part in some of these um, programs, some of these workshops that North Shore Multicultural Society um, provides, and maybe model a program um, for the municipality um, uh, around the model that was used with the library, and, and begin our discussion there and our conversation, start in the grassroots of our own community, and, um, and see what our partners are already doing. And uh, because I think there's a lot of our community partners that are already engaged in, in a lot of these yeah. discussions as you know was pointed out in regards to the library. So that's where I'd like to start with this. And, um, and certainly I think it would be very um, helpful for council to take part um, in a program um, to be able to have those conversations and uh, to ask those questions and to learn. Um, and you know, so we can um, move forward as well. So those are, those are where I'd like to start with this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murray. And I echo a lot of the same comments that you just made. Um, you know, this may be an initiative that we can at least start off with um, our other North Shore partners. Uh, there's going to become a time where we're going to have to review our own specific policies and our own specific, um, uh, you know, responses. But I think at least educating people and getting people on the same starting point would be great if we were doing that through the Multicultural Society and with our partner municipalities um, as well. Um, you know, I think just as, as Councillor Curran said, this is going to be a lifelong process uh, and, and in entirely changing our systems over to be anti-racist and, and uh, bias-free is going to take generations of change. Uh, that doesn't mean there isn't an urgency to it. We have to start now. And, um, but I think one of the ways that we should, we should focus at least doing the first steps on is doing them together with the other municipalities if we can. And so uh, this, this would be one that I, I think we should probably reach out to uh, the other municipalities, CAOs, and try to see what we can do together. And then if there is an element of consulting work that needs to take place in the short term, then uh, we can we can do that through potentially through the North Shore Multicultural Society and put those resources through that that and um, at least get the benefit for all municipalities wherever the municipalities are at with this at least we'd all be getting some benefit um, uh, out of it but um, I, I think that would be a good first step. I see. I don't have any other hands up from council yet. I know that this is the start of a, a long process so. Um, I guess, Mr. Stewart, I'm going to come back to you first, uh, just to double check. Are you looking for something more explicit from council or does that at least give you the first couple of steps? No, we're just looking at staff for an understanding of A, how council understands what this initiative looks like and B, uh, how comfortable they are in terms of making some initial progress. We're just trying to get a sense of before we come back with a work program and a budget and, a, and, and the coalition suggests a structure with staff. We just wanted to ensure that there's an understanding of what we're getting into. And uh, I, I think, you know, I, I was trained in the Kingswood Institute, which goes back 20 or 30 years on multiculturalism. And, you know, things change and they don't change. So I, I think that certainly things that have, uh, circumstances that have occurred in society in the last year even, you know, the Black Lives Matter and all the rest has really brought a sharp point to this. And we just wanted to understand where council is at. And so any comments that council makes gives us an appreciation of how we can start to develop a work plan, how we can work with the multicultural society, but not only that, the community in general. So uh, no, any, any comments we have, this is not intended to get a resolution. It's just intended to understand um, and, and be more confident as we move forward as staff in terms of what we can do or not do. 
and, and council has been very helpful in this regard. And I think uh, Councillor Hansen's point was was valid. You know, when you walk around the halls of District Hall, it, it, there actually is a much greater degree of diversity than there is around the council table. Uh, some of those challenges are systemic at a different level, in that the the, the, the Elections Act uh, is run provincially, and we'd be in tricky territory if we were giving a particular advantage uh, to someone. Um, but the province has the ability to do that. Uh, the other point I thought that uh, Wendy McCullough made that was really great was that um, uh, you know we could be supporting inspirational speakers to try to encourage people to run. I note that out of the 23 people running for, uh, for uh, North Vancouver District Council positions, uh, only three were persons of uh, vis visible minorities. And so the likelihood that you would get one, two, or all three of those people elected onto a council out of a group of 23, it's, um, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, and it certainly comes up with making sure that people are having opportunities to serve on our committees and uh, report to council and have the profile that you get leading up to an election. Uh, but I think that inspirational piece, finding people of color who have succeeded in, uh, in, in politics and leadership in our country and making sure that we surround them, support them and use them to, uh, to make people feel welcome to participate. Um, I, I think that's a great starting point. Councillors Curran and Bond. Councillor Curran. Thanks. Um... I think it's important. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. And if 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 council doesn't support this, I think they need to be clear that they that they don't. Um, and perhaps they do. But I think it, we need to be clear that it's also looking at our organization. Um, and so that's our senior staff committing, and it's um, it's human resources. It's everything within. We're one of the largest employers. Um, on the North Shore, and um, I, we have a lot of work to do as an organization. So I want to make sure that the work that we're talking about um, is is turning the mirror both on ourselves. I think this is deeply individual work, um, but it's it's also work that we need to do um, within our municipal within our municipality. So there's the community, there's the organization, there's council, um, and I think you know I I would like us to strongly. Um, come out in support of all of these um, initiatives and and having staff report back on specifically um, how they see that. And we haven't talked too much about um, the, and I, so my apologies that I didn't specifically bring up um, the Missing Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Two-Spirit, um, which was part of um, the the plan uh, with reconciliation. And so I think that, I think that we do need to take very specific um, or at least give direction for specific actions or I feel like we're not um, sending a message that we are um, really being accountable and, and trying to move forward with urgency. Um, so I, I perhaps going through the specific asks that I had um, uh, would be helpful. I, I just wanna make sure that we don't leave without with staff not having clear direction um, from us because I, I know we're not gonna get there right away, but I think we always need to be um, moving forward and. Um, I just want to make sure that we're able to do that. Um, I had another thought, but I'll go to Councillor Bond. Sure. Councillor Bond. Thanks, Milo. Just to support um, what Councillor Curran said. And I think that she has done some of the work that um, you know I would have expected staff to do for the presentation, uh, it, coming up with specific recommendations and specific actions. And so, you know, a first step, and uh, you know, I like uh, I like how uh, we can talk about um, as you know, being the uh, elected leadership for uh, the municipality, um, going into this work, uh, you know, <laughs> with both feet um, as leaders and, and showing not just um, our staff uh, and our organization and the corporation uh, that this work is important, but also our municipality. So, uh, you know, I think uh, Council Curran has put a number of um, specific asks. Uh, you know, one of them is uh, an audit of existing uh, policies and existing um, structures within the organization uh, with a lens to anti-racism. Uh, one of them is, you know, uh, you know, individual work uh, of council and uh, senior staff, whether we, we call that training or, or untraining or uh, whatever we'd like to call that. Um, those are quite specific asks. So, um, you know, at a bare minimum, you know, staff could take what uh, Council Curran has presented 
and, and come back to council with some options about you know time frames uh what kind of uh, budget we're going to need to look at for for those different options um and so that that would be you know supporting what councillor kern said that's that would be my specific action and recommendation uh coming out of this uh this workshop and, and i'll just touch on uh, I'll, I'll touch on one other point uh, that um councillor hansen and mayor little um mentioned uh, in terms of uh, you know our representation here uh, you know it's not just you know, the elected officials that are all visibly white, but uh, I would say most of our uh, senior executive staff, uh, unless I'm missing anyone, um, are, are also uh, uh, visibly white. And uh, you know, the the three um, uh, people that were were not white that ran the election, uh, we actually ran with all of them. So um, if if we're interested in hearing what some of the barriers are for um, people in our community that uh, are, are not white and getting elected, uh, we could talk to them. I think they have lots to share. Um, you know, it's not my place to share their experiences or what I've heard, but you know, there was uh, instances of uh, of individual racism uh, during the election campaign, uh, and uh, so I think you know, just talk to the people that have run, talk to the people that wanted to run uh, but didn't. Uh, that's that's a, that's a great place to start. So, I have uh, Councillor back. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, and not much to add to Councillor Bond's comments. There, I agree with everything he's just said. Um, and again, thanks, Megan, for getting us to this point. And I support everything that was in your original report as well. So, if t staff can take it at this point and and come back with potential actions, I think that would be a good next step. And my understanding was we are looking at our organization um, first as a big part of it. So um, that was my understanding and I'm still supportive of it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Back. Uh, I see no further speakers. I think Mr. Stewart's been trying to speak. Oh, he's, he's hidden in the forest back there or by the you mountain. Know, your hand kind of melds in with the snow-capped mountains. There you go, that works. Mr. Stewart. I'm just going to say, Your Worship, I, 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 I do want to make it very clear. We could have come forward with a report recommending specific actions and steps and budgets and all the rest of that. But I committed to Council to come and have this conversation first. So this has been very helpful. Um, I, I, I don't accept the criticism that we should have acted earlier. I, I think we need to have a consensus around this issue before we, we start to develop action plans and work plans, because this is a very significant initiative. And so I'm most appreciative of the comments that we, we've uh, received and we'll certainly come back uh, with some recommendations to council. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. I see no further speakers. Uh, oh, Councillor Mary. I just wanted to, um, within those recommendations, Mr. Stewart, um, I, I, again, would just um, echo the need to work with our partners that we've got, certainly North Shore Multicultural um, Society. I'd like to have an opportunity to meet with them, um, staff meet with them and look at what their programs are to offer and how we can at least begin this. Um, there's, I mean, there's, you know, no harm in, in um, uh, taking part in those um, apart from uh, the coalition um, concept that has come forward from um, the FCM. Um, but certainly uh, what opportunities our partners within our own agencies are already taking part in and, uh, you know, any programs that we would be able to um, commence. Um, so I'd like that to be part of that, those recommendations. Well, absolutely. I, I, I can't believe that actually we would develop staff recommendations without uh, consulting with the stakeholders. And in fact, the coalition requirements are, in fact, before you submit a an application for membership, you do that kind of consultation. So that's one of the things we'll be looking at. And I think the um, the concept of the audit is important because I, I think we do a lot of things really well. Um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I, I, I know that Mr. Stewart, I, I've sat on councils with, you know, sort of the gender makeup of this. And then I've sat on councils for many years where I was the only female on the council for three terms, I think I sat with um, uh, all males on this council. And um, yes, um, 
And uh, I, I think I'd also like to, um, when we reach out to the other two municipalities, I'd like to reach out to the school district to see what they're doing. Um, I think somebody said, um, you know, our young people are uh, really, you know, they are the ones that we can transform as they move forward into the future. And um, they have a vision of the world that even in the generation um, that we're in is, is quite different. Um, I, had a, I have a little quick story. I had a conversation with my 90 year old father. Uh, he just turned 90 in October and he immigrated, his father immigrated from Norway and then to Saskatchewan. And when he was five, they moved to Vancouver. And the first community that they lived in um, while they were building a house in Deep Cove, they lived in it for two years, was in Chinatown. And uh, my father was the only white little boy that lived. And he was telling this story to um, the residents in which he lives. And uh, he was saying that he was accepted so quickly um, by the Chinese community in Vancouver. And he remembered his best friend, Han. He had very um, uh, good memories of that. And, uh, you know, he was Norwegian. Um, so it's funny when you go back into the past, um, what kind of relationships were created and how they move forward. And then I would end with a story that my, my daughter told me, my, my middle daughter, when she was in grade five, and they had, um, she had two very, um, uh, um, two children with disabilities. Um, they were twins and they had um, severe disabilities. They were members of our school and their family was a member of our school. And uh, I remember she came home one day and she said, mom, um, I'm so excited. And I go, what? And she goes, um, we learned sign language today because the two little boys were nonverbal. And, um, you know, I, I remember, you know, I, I don't remember having kids with those, kind, that, those disabilities at that level when I was going to school. Um, but I was, when I saw their mother at the grocery store, I actually burst into tears because I was so, I was so proud that she was so happy to learn a, a skill from um, a child who had such um, extreme needs, um, and yet she was she was able to see beyond that. So those children, our children, are our future in um, you know recognizing the importance of cultures from all over the world and different people, um, different looks, tall and short and, and, and thin and fat and brown and black and white and, and yellow and all of those, that rainbow. Um, and just uh, accept people for be human beings, for being people, right? So I look forward to this. I, I look forward to this conversation. And again, I'm Ms. McCall, I just wanna thank you for um, making it easier um, to talk about this because it is an emotional issue. And uh, thank you very much. Council, I see no further speakers on the matter. Uh, will somebody move? I guess we don't have a uh, receipt. Action, so we'll move receipt of the uh, of the report. Yeah, that's all that's necessary, Your Worship. Uh, we're we're just looking for conversation tonight. So. Moved by Council Mary, seconded by Council Back. Call the question on the motion. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion carries. Uh, Council, uh, thank you very much. We've completed the business uh, on the agenda for the workshop. So if someone moves adjournment, I will accept. Move adjournment. And thank, thank you, Wendy, for talk. coming. Thank you so much, Wendy, for your presentation. Thank you, uh, Wendy. Uh, Council, we are recessed from a previous meeting. To rejoin that previous meeting, you have to go to the original link for the previous meeting. Uh, and we will set that up for you over the next couple of minutes. Thank you.